Hello and welcome to Art with Mrs G. In this video we're going to be looking at printing and in particular with fruit and vegetables. But what is printing and how is this type of art different from other art? Well printing is when you take an object such as a piece of fruit or vegetables or a piece of wood or a piece of stone and you create a pattern on it or there's an existing pattern on it which you like you put some paint on it and you press it down and you can print the same image again and again and again so you get a repetitive pattern and this of course is particularly useful if you're creating patterns for curtains, duvets, cushions, pillows, clothing, that kind of thing. So how is it different from other art? Well in other art generally people only produce an original piece of art once. They draw it or they paint it very carefully and it's a one-off. Let's have a look at a few examples of printing before we try doing a bit of our own. Here you see the artwork of Andy Warhol who is an American artist who came to fame in the 1960s and was very famous for repeat printing images of Marilyn Monroe and the Queen and tins of soup and everyday objects. His work is still very popular. This is the work of Moritz Cornelius Escher, who was a Dutch artist who became very famous in the early 1900s. He was a great mathematician and loved to fit shapes together, and he printed off blocks of wood and stone. These lovely natural patterns were produced by a British textile designer in the 1800s. They are still very popular on curtains and chairs and sofas and things around the house. My final international example of printing is the work of Hokusai from Japan, who used to carve into wood and print off wooden blocks. Right, let's get ourselves ready for printing. So first you need to go and find some objects to print with. I'm going to have a look in the fridge and the fruit bowl. Hmm. Next, get some adult help to cut your objects in half ready for printing. I've set myself up in the kitchen ready to do my printing because I don't want to get any paint on a carpet in another room. I've got my newspaper ready to catch the mess. I'm going to be printing on scrap paper. You don't need to waste new paper. Um, you can also use the scrap paper or a paper plate or a, a real plate to put your paint on. Um, I've got all my vegetables cut and ready. I've got a wet cloth for mucky fingers and I'm pretty much ready to go. And for this, you can use any kind of paint, the thicker the better really, and you only need a little. So nice thick acrylic paint or poster paint, or if you've got none of that at home, why don't you try printing with uh, a bit of turmeric paste or some baked beans or tomato ketchup or coffee. Have a go, be creative. I'm squeezing out paint onto my plate, but I'm trying not to get them muddled up. They're in their own little areas really. Don't want to waste plates. There we go, I've chosen three nice colours. We don't need too many and try not to mix them all up because they might go brown. Let's think about what you can do when you're printing to be creative. So I put a little bit of paint onto the item that I'm printing with. And if you want, you can get a brush just to help spread it over the surface because this isn't going everywhere there. So I've covered my pair. And now I'm going to start printing and I'm thinking of doing a pattern. So I push and I hold and I lift and I can turn the pair the other way up and then turn it back again and start creating a repeating pattern. Or you might decide to rotate the pair. Okay, so remember you might want to rotate your object. Again, I'm going to just spread the paint over it a little bit more again. So let's try turning it this time, like a star. So the pair is going to point into the middle. Turn my object and turn the page. This time I'm going to do overlapping shapes. Okay, so I'm going to do some red ones along the top there. And then you can get a cloth and actually wipe off that piece of fruit and put the next colour on. I'm going to put some green on that one now. A 
and now I'm going to overlap. Just turn it sideways. Another idea is to twist your object. So try putting it down on the page and turning it, spinning it on the page to see what kind of pattern you get. Now you've got a few ideas for techniques, time to create your own design. I'm going to go for the pepper, which has got a lovely shape when you cut across it. Let's see what I can invent. Now some little celery shapes maybe, with which you could do a border or patterns in the gaps again. And lastly, how about some broccoli, because you can get what's called a stippling effect, little dots off the surface of the broccoli. I've decided to, to develop the other prints that I was practicing on earlier. So I'm putting a bit of red on my pair now and I'm going to add this to my green spiral. And part of the beauty of printing that you can't get with other methods is this bitty effect. You get lovely gaps and natural accidents that happen. So don't worry if yours doesn't print that well because all of these little patterns are so beautiful and that's what makes printing unique. While you're waiting for your printing to dry, why don't you go on a scavenger hunt around your house looking for items that have patterns that repeat and which have probably been printed. So I went into my lounge and straight away I found the pattern on my blanket which repeats in reds and oranges and yellows and my cushions had a lovely pattern on it. In my kitchen right here behind me I found my drying mat has got lovely orange shaped patterns on it and if I pop over here straight to my tea towel there's another pattern. When your art's dry, you might want to leave it just like that because you're very happy with the effect, or you might want to get some coloured pens and pencils and just carry on developing it a little bit further. I added some yellow in the little ink gaps and then I got an orange pen and I put some little dots in it as well which matched the dots that came off the pair. I also added a few squiggly lines and then I got my colouring pens and I decided that blue and purple would look nice as some background shapes in between the pairs. I hope you enjoyed printing with fruit and veg with me today and please do tune in to my next video which will have another printing technique. In the meanwhile, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Goodbye.